Hello there, my fellow wealthy mech warriors, and welcome back to a dose of the Battletech Battlemax lore. Today is gonna be a very special day and episode, as we will indulge in a category of Battlemax we never explored before. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the Super Heavies, a category with very few actual models in it. It is also, in my opinion, more a proof of concept than actual line war machines. But I may be wrong. Nevertheless, today we will talk about not one, but two Super Heavy Battle Max, the Poseidon and the Omega. I initially wanted to make a video just about the Ares Super Heavy, but that one had so many references to the Poseidon, I thought I should do this one first. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Poseidon A few stats on this guy include It is a super heavy design at 125 tons, with a top speed of, surprisingly, 54 kilometers an hour. Ever since the dawn of the battle mech, it seems, engineers have tried to develop a war machine capable of breaking the so-called 100-ton barrier. That point where simply too much mass stresses a frame made of too many moving parts. In the days of the original Star League, there were many attempts made to achieve this. All the way to the realm's bitter end with the so-called Amaris' Folly, the Matar design, but more on that on another day. It wasn't until the waning days of the Jihad that the technology came out to make viable Super Heavy Battle Max. But the sheer devastation that befell Terra, and the taint of any machines made from the Word of Blake research, led to a moratorium on the notion of building mechs bigger, stronger, and better than before. Having the sponsoring realm champion the cause of universal peace and minimal armies didn't help either. But that is not to say the Republic of the Sphere wasn't ready to jump at a chance. No sooner had the war erupted in the wake of the blackout, and the fortress walls had gone up, that the so-called Rhodes Project went into overdrive, aimed at giving the Republic nothing short of the ultimate mech. The Poseidon is the first of the tripod super-heavies, or as many have dubbed them, the Colossals, produced by the Rhodes Project. But you wouldn't know that from all the hype. Unlike the heavier Ares, the Poseidon was not built for modular technology. This made it easy for observers to identify many of its features once they survived the initial encounter. Prototypes of this unit first saw action at the Serbian Proving Grounds on Terra, when rebel senatorial forces attempted to seize the top-secret facilities in 3135. Two testbed PSD-X1 models took the Rebels completely by surprise, achieving almost as much from their shocking appearance as they did with their actual guns. The entire engagement took place under a blackout imposed by the Proving Grounds Loyalist Commanders, and was subsequently classified under orders from Exarch Levin himself. Details of the Poseidon's performance quickly led to the refinements that appeared on the final PSD-V2. Presently, all the Poseidon and Ares-class super-heavy tripods are being used only by the RAF's most reliable commands, with most of them deployed only in defensive roles. The Poseidon was the first of its kind, in modern times anyway, in using free legs instead of the commonly found bipedal or quad designs. Commonly known as the super-heavy tripod because of its immense size, the Poseidon's method of locomotion gained advantage over the more commonly used ones, allowing it to change direction without losing much speed. It was faster than many in its size class. Its powerful Plasma Star 375 rated extra light engine and the sturdy endosteel construction allowing the mech to move and carry a ponderous amount of weaponry. The hull was protected by 24 tons of Maximilian 320 standard armor, allowing it to absorb an immense amount of damage before succumbing to enemy fire. The three-man cockpit used in the Super Heavy tripod allowed the mech to act as a command unit, and be able to target multiple enemies with less of a penalty. That is due to the Poseidon's command responsibilities being split between a dedicated pilot, a gunner, and a technician engineer. 
Its long-range arsenal includes a pair of clan-grade ERPPCs mounted in the left arm actuator. A pair of five-tube long-range missile launchers back up the mech's energy weapons in each of the side torsos. The Poseidon's intermediate-range weaponry include an Apollo-guided 20-tube medium missile launcher and a TSEMP cannon bow found in the right arm. Finally, its short-range weaponry includes a pair of side torso clan ER medium lasers, three clan ER small lasers, and three two-tubed SRM launchers. All of the mech's missile ammunition is protected by Case 2, found in each of the mech's side torsos. The original prototype of the Poseidon, unlike the following versions, had only a one-man cockpit. The initial prototypes also suffered from a faulty fire control system, and only two of them were ever made. Their designation was the PSD-X1. A notable mech warrior associated with this design is Captain Jacques Wolfcastle. As a test pilot for the Rhodes Project, the then Lieutenant Wolfcastle gained the distinction of being one of the Republic's first Poseidon pilots to see battle at the helm of a Prototype X-1 in Serbia. Although he operated the machine solo, the three man cockpit systems were not yet established and integrated yet, and was saddled with a faulty targeting system, he did manage to drive off the rebel senatorial forces with a combination of intimidation and some spray and pray shooting. In recognition of his exemplary bravery and loyalty, Wolfcastle was promoted to captain and given command of one of the first completed V2 Poseidons. Now posted to Stone's Fury on Liberty, he has since owned his skill with a full crew of veteran mech warriors, and leads a full lance of super heavy tripods. His combat style still remains focused on using shock as a main weapon demoralizing the enemy with overkill attacks and saturation fire, all designed to deliver more flash and thunder than actual precision. Secondly for today, the Omega. Some stats on this big guy include. It is also of the Super Heavy class, weighing at a whooping 150 tons, with a top speed of 32 kilometers an hour. Just as fast as an urban mech so at least you know you're doing something right. Manufactured in small numbers by Skobol Mechworks from their facilities in the Russia region of Terra prior to the fall of the Word of Blake, the Omega represented the first truly viable super-heavy battle mech design to appear on the battlefield. Although the Omega was a prototype, almost 30 of these huge mechs were produced by Scoble prior to the Super Heavy Manufacturing Center being destroyed during Operation Scour. The bulk of these mechs were deployed in and around the Devil Peak Command Post, used for Presenter Marshal Cameron St. James' final stand. But some Omegas also saw service around Hilton Head and in Cairo. Although the concept of a super heavy mech was already explored by the Terran hegemony centuries earlier, and later by Amaris forces, with the Matar as an example, and the clans also polishing that concept launching the Stone Rhino, it wasn't until the Word of Blake overcame the problems associated with such a massive design that the Omega became actually viable. It featured an endosteel skeleton larger and bulkier than any seen before oversized actuators and a new myomer system, which involved both larger fiber bundles than standard and the use of hybrid myomers. The Blakists were able to overcome a number of the flaws discovered by those who had explored the concept in the past. The resulting internal structure was far bigger than would be viable for any conventional battle mech. In the case of the Omega, this resulted in a working super heavy design that stood half again as tall as the mighty King Crab from which the designers had obviously taken certain cues. The Omega was powered by an extra-light Vlar 300 engine, but other than the unusual internal structure, mimers and actuators, featured relatively mundane armor, cockpit and weaponry. The weight and nature of the design as a super heavy demanded the use of a heavy-duty gyro. But even with the added weight from the enhanced gyro, the Omega featured a spacious frame for fitting weapons and equipment into, and each Omega boasted an improved C3 computer as well. 
Wrapped in 27 tons of armor, and with the arms and torso areas protected by Case 2, the Omega was a rugged machine, capable of weathering huge amounts of fire, and its combination of weapons made it as capable of acting as a lethal defense unit, and even as a serviceable anti-aircraft platform. However, as might be expected from such a huge mech, the Omega was also slow and cumbersome and all of the prototypes produced by Scoble are believed to have been destroyed in battle. The only exception was on the planet Solaris, where, after the Jihad, the Kuritan stables possess at least one functional Omega, which was used sometimes in the arena Ishiyama to face other assault mechs. Each Omega mounted an Imperator Code Red LB-10X autocannon in each arm, with an M7 Gauss rifle in each of the three torso areas. The autocannons were each supplied with 2 tons of ammo, while a total of 10 tons of ammo for the Gauss rifles was distributed among the torso areas of the mech. The super heavy construction of the Omega also made it the first mech capable of mounting an inner sphere standard Gauss rifle with ammunition and case 2 in the center torso. Another version of the Omega is the SHP-5R. Developed as part of the Republic's research into super heavy designs, this model replaces the endosteel skeleton of the original with a standard super heavy skeleton. The Gauss rifles were replaced with heavy PPCs, but overall the model is considered inferior to the original. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you on the Poseidon and the Omega Super Heavy Battle Max for today. You can also expect a video on the Ares, and likely other Super Heavies as well, sometime in the near future. What are your thoughts on the Poseidon or the Omega? Are they among your favorite Battle Max? Do you even like Super Heavy designs at all? Of course, they are big and well-armored and well-armed, but they do have some obvious drawbacks as well. Let us all know what your thoughts or experiences are with these super heavies in the comments below. Was the video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. This is GDN signing out.